So now that we have distributed our servers across the internet, we need to understand a little bit about how some servers uh, providers work. So I've got a little simplified map here of the United States. And let's say that we have a web browser for, for someone here in, I don't know, Portland, Maine or something like that. And they're trying to access a web server and that web server hasn't been distributed yet, so it's out here in, in Silicon Valley, right here. And so what happens is if we make a request on this web browser, the web browser is connected to some internet service provider. And the web server is connected to maybe a different service provider. And so when the web browser uh, makes a request, it's going to send its request on the network until it gets to maybe Boston uh, and and in Boston the service provider that's connected to the web server says oh look at this request is heading out over here to Silicon Valley and but they're connected up to a different service provider so rather than using my network and using my resources I'm gonna transfer for that request to their network and it's their job then to finish the request and it's going to go some way like this and it eventually gets over here to, to California. The server makes its response and then it's ready to, to it's processing, it's ready to do its response and so that, that server starts responding on its network and then that service provider says, hey wait, this is going to this web browser over here I don't want to use my network to uh, clog up all its resources. I'm going to pass it off to the service provider that that web browser is on. And so maybe it goes some northern route up through here, maybe even through Canada and, and back. And so what can happen here is you get different routes for your request. Let's label this. This is the HTTP request and your response simply because and that's really hard to read I understand th j simply because you have two different service providers um, involved and maybe this uh, service provider for the red request is faster than the service provider for the green response and and so we get this kind of weird uh, set up where the request and response have different behavior, different routes, different everything. So what happens now if this service company s starts to expand and it says, hey, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to put one of our locations, our co-locations right here because it's where th they got handed off from the web browser so service provider to our service provider. Now the network request that comes in is going to stay on one network. It's going to come here and then it's going to come back and it's going to be all on one network. This is really great because then we have uh, incentive from this service provider to provide us with good service because they're not going to be able to offload the request onto some other service provider and so they're going to want to give us really good, great service to get this request and response off the network as quickly as possible and it doesn't even uh, account for the fact that th the distance traveled for that request and response is very small now I know the speed of light is fast but if you just are thinking about the distance between uh, say New York and, and LA. The, the time that it takes for the electricity uh, to travel over a fiber optic, or, or I should say light to travel over a fiber optic cable uh, or, or electricity through c copper is approximately nine milliseconds. 